a, just a quick sort of one for you this evening. I was um, I'm sort of uh, looking through the Scott Euler website today, um, and I found something that was quite interesting. It kind of goes through the whole, um, the whole sort of uh, reason why a Scott Euler is a good idea, and you know how the chain, what the makeup of the chain is, you know. Uh, from times of old into now the new O-ring and X-ring. And, and I just found a, a section that I thought was particularly interesting um, in the manual that you can print off. Um, it's, it's fairly easy to find, but I imagine not many people who buy a Scott Oiler actually look into it. And um, it says, um, under on page 9, it says, automatic chain lubrication. It says, what, so why is continuous lubrication better than traditional spray lubrication? Um, An automatic chain lubrication signify, uh, significantly increases chain and sprocket life and saves you money on replacement parts. Remember the sticky mess that you create with traditional tacky spray lube? This is the main reason why chains wear prematurely. And if you could avoid a, the sticky tacky lube, you can increase the chain's life dramatically. Continuous lubrication will lubricate your chain every mile of the road, eliminating the need for tacky lube that is only applied every 300 miles. This means that the correct amount of lubrication at any given time, exactly where it's needed, when it's needed. And it raises a good point actually, it says next, think about this, interval between lubrication requires you to replenish it after 300 miles. During your ride, the lubricant will attract dirt and grit from the road or be washed off by the rain. And this means that after 300 miles, you no longer have sufficient lubrication uh, on your chain that will greatly uh, that will guarantee proper lubrication. Now, automatic chain, this is the interesting one. It says, <clears throat> automatic lubrication, on the other hand, lubricates the chain continuously while the bike is in use. Yes, we know that. Um, this allows the use of a much less viscous or sticky lubricant this will ultimately get thrown from the chain as excess oil builds up on the outer surfaces. This used oil will have passed through the chain, collecting dust, grit and dirt and carrying them from the chain. When the oil is flung off from the chain, it takes the contaminants with it. The lubrication film on the chain is then replenished with fresh oil delivered by the automatic oiler. The total loss self-cleaning system leads to a cleaner and much more effective transmission and guarantees perfect lubrication of the chain and sprockets at all times. Now, I'm not going to teach people to suck eggs or, you know, I'm not trying to claim that people are silly when they complain about things like fling. But the idea is that it is supposed to fling and that's from Scott Euler themselves. Now, those who complain about excessive chain fling, yes, you can sort of dial it down to sort of reduce the amount of fling, but the idea is it is supposed to throw the chain off and uh, the chain contaminants off, and it's written in their manual. Um, so I just thought you might find that as an interesting piece of information. Um, I'm sort of going through their, um, their sort of information at the moment, just kind of having a look and seeing what they're saying about, you know, why they've come up with this idea, etc. But I found that quite interesting because actually it does bring up an interesting point that a lot of people do complain about chain fling. Um, but that's the idea. Um, and it, it kind of, there's chain fling excessively. I mean, obviously, if you saw the previous video, you'd have seen the amount of chain fling that I had after that 200 mile ride. But you know what? My chain was immaculate. Um, and I don't, I don't know. Yes, it was. You know, I'm quite quite a clean freak, to be honest. Um, and I looked at the bike, and I was like, ah, in my head. And then I actually saw the condition of the chain. And I thought, well, actually, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. You know, I wanted a chain that didn't stretch so much, and actually came back looking clean and, and was well sufficiently lubricated all the way through the journey which with normal spray lubes it doesn't happen um but yeah when i saw this i was sort of looking at it and i was thinking yeah the whole point is it is supposed to be a total loss system um basically this i'll show you this chart here because it kind of it's very basically easy to see um the blue line is manual chain lubrication and the yellow line is you know um the automatic system and basically it's showing that when you apply the lubricant originally you've got so much chain lube on there um it's excessive um which then gets the dirt that you're trying to avoid um and then it hits a point around here where it's bang on what the main sort of the automatic lubricator is doing 
and then you get to a point about here where there is it's too dry um the chain loop is insufficient um so yeah it's quite a, quite an interesting point um I think as far as automatic chain orders go, I think it is the way to go. I think if you're that dead set against them, um, I mean, obviously this is just sort of week one talking here, and um, I genuinely, if you are that set against automatic oilers, I would say ditch your spray can lubes anyway, except for, I would go for the cleaners, chain cleaners, yes. Um, so far, what I'm seeing is, um, and you can check this out with Fort 9 as well, gear oil. If you really don't like automatic oilers, for the sake of um, rust prevention and the fact that it will fling dirt off, yes, it will fling oil, but it is going to do the same sort of thing. It's going to take some of the dirt away as well. If you really don't want an automatic chain oiler, I would say look at gear oil, um, sort of heavyweight gear oil. Um, for motorcycles, um, because <sighs> gear oil isn't particularly sticky. It's just heavy, um, and it's a lubricant. It's designed to do, you know, it's designed for rust prevention and things like that. You know, it will keep your chain from rusting. Fort Nine did a very, you know, Ryan at Fort Nine did a very, very comprehensive, um, very comprehensive chain loop test. If you type in um, motorcycle chain loops, I think it is on YouTube. Um, and have a look at Fort Nine. Um, the video Ryan did was absolutely fantastic. Um, really thorough. Looked at multiple tests. You know, pick up grit. Looked at rust prevention. You know, uh, looked at even rolling, um, sort of rolling wheel and sort of testing the friction levels before it jammed up the rollers and things like that. Um, I think gear all came in third in that round, but in terms of the overall, um, you know, I think gear oil and motel paste, sort of the, the wipe on stuff, you know, it's like on a brush. Um, that came out, you know, two out of the three. I think I can't remember what the other one was. Um, I've got a feeling it might've been Oxford, might come as one of the three, but definitely I would say use gear oil if you don't want, um, if you don't want an automatic chain loop. I don't know why you wouldn't necessarily, I mean, if you can, if you set it up right, from what I've experienced at the moment, yes, there's fling, but it was easily wiped off and my chain was immaculate. Um, you know, it doesn't take 10 minutes to clean the, the wheel up the rim. You know, um, I didn't get any on the tire. I still haven't got any on my tires. No problems there. Um, and as it states from here, it's designed to be a loss oil system. Um, and it's deliberately designed that way. You don't want a lot of people think that chain lubrication, you know, means that the chain is constantly um, sort of lubricated, and that is the case. But they they think that anything that flings off is bad. And actually, you know, people say, "Oh yeah, we want anti-fling chain lube." And I just think, actually, when you look at it, if you get an anti-fling chain lube that's really sticky, what you are effectively doing is you're inviting dirt and grime and dust and sand to stick to that lubricant and then stick to your chain at the same time. Um, and I, I, you want something that's going to be thrown away because if, if, you know, if you're reliant on something being, you know, I mean, think of it in terms of engine oil. You know, engine oil gets thinner and thinner, you know, when you use it and it starts to become basically piss water, so to speak. Um, and that's why you change it because it doesn't have the same viscosity and it doesn't do the same lubrication job. Um, so when you get to a point where your chain lube is wearing down in terms of, you know, it's been washed off by rain, it's covered in crap, you know, that's, you change engine oil because of metal filings and things like that, especially on new bikes, you know, you change that to get rid of all the shit that's come away from the, from the engine components and you deliberately flush that out so that your engine runs smooth um, and doesn't have nasty little bits running around in the rotating parts. Um, and it's the same with the chain, you know, by cleaning the chain consistently when riding by a constant lubrication system or using gear oil, you are not encouraging crap to stick to your chain. Um, and therefore actually, you know, what you are doing is by having fling, you know, you are, you know, 
you're encouraging the chain life to and, and the chain to be lubricated and, and consistently looked after rather than allowing it to sort of you know build up a nasty sort of paste on there you know that you you have to scrub to get off um you know i i personally i'm the more and more i'm doing research into it the more and more i'm experiencing it for myself i mean i honestly I, as i said before at the beginning i'm not being paid by scott oiler i'm not being um you know i'm not in any way vested interest you know if i've just thrown 90 quid down the toilet for buying a v, v system you know that's my tough shit you know what i mean that's my tough luck um that's my own doing um but from what i'm seeing what i'm actually physic what i'm actually experiencing when i'm looking at the bike when i'm going out for rides when i'm coming back off rides and i'm looking at the chain when i'm sort of you know the other day i i did spray it with chain cleaner i didn't need to when i finished the ride the other day i didn't need to because it was well lubricated but i did it just because that's my normal chain cleaning process um i'm probably sure i could have got away with just wiping it down with a rag and it would have taken all the rest of the crap off but you know it's just false of habit i guess i used a chain cleaner um but yeah I'm, I'm starting to feel like i've really wasted a lot of money on chain loops in a can you know the sticky stuff i mean why would why would you want something to stick to your chain like that you know the idea is the chain is supposed to be clean and, and sort of able to move you know if you were you know, if you're cutting down a tree with a chainsaw, you don't want the bits of wood and splinters to stay in the ble in the in the chain. It's, you know, you want it to be a free saw to do its job. You know, I, I yeah, I, I just um, yeah, I'm starting to really think that actually, gear oil and um, and things like that, and and as I say, a constant lubrication system like a Scott oil. I mean, I, I'm not even trying to promote Scott Oiler, there are other there are other oilers, automatic oilers out there. It's just dependent on what, what's best for you and what you prefer. You know, there might be something else out there that you think, yeah, I think this one's better than Scott Oiler. It's fine, whatever. But chain lubes, um I can't I can't understand why you would want something sticking to your chain consistently. The only thing I can think of is the fact that people who used to use oil didn't like the fact it would fling off and the fact they had to keep reapplying they thought let's make something that's sticky so it doesn't stick to the chain so often um you know it doesn't it doesn't fly off so often and it will stick more it will last longer in inverted commas but actually what you get as a byproduct is something even more negative which is a grinding paste oh dear yeah Sorry, this is a bit of a boring video. <laughs> it's just something I've... Um, it's something that's playing on my mind, as I say. I'm a bit of a clean freak. I'm a bit of like a... I want to make sure I get the most out of my components on the bike. So I guess so far, upshot of it all. I'm very impressed with the Scott Oiler and what it's doing and how it works. Um, if I if I weren't to endorse the Scott Oiler at some... You know, if I came to the end of the trial and decided actually no don't like the Scott Oiler. Um, so far, what I would do if I came to the point of not liking the Scott Oiler and decided, no, I'm going to go back to the old fashioned way, I wouldn't be using spray lubes anymore. Truth be told. I just wouldn't. Um, I would I would look at gear oil. I, th I think uh, I think my days of buying chain lube are over. So thank you for watching this video. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll sort of keep you updated with how the Scott Oil is going and things like that. Um, I'm actually going to do an interesting, I say interesting, um, depends on how much you kind of like these videos. I haven't really had any people watching the videos, really. Um, but never mind, it keeps me entertained. Um, oh, God, what a sad life I lead. Um, I have just recently lubricated my fiance's chain on her Gladius. I uh, did that the other night. I'm going to double check it before we go. We're looking to go down for a ride to Captain Jasper's on possibly Saturday um, with a friend of ours. Um, so I think I'm going to do a before and after of the chains. Um, I might just, you know, sort of clean and re-lubricate her bike, uh, her chain on Friday. Maybe just wipe off my chain Friday night as well and just kind of 
so that it's an even test, a fair test, and just see the condition of the bike chains when we actually arrive. Um, we're going to go through the coast road through Slapton and things, um, which is really beautiful. Um, I might even video it as well, actually. It's quite a nice run, but it would be... Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the condition of the two chains are when we actually reach Plymouth, which the rate, the way we're going is going to be about, I think it's about 40, 45 miles or something like that. So it's not too far, but, you know, it kind of puts the sort of bit of work on it and sort of puts a little bit of a test against um, traditional chain leaves versus um, the Scott 